Today, my topic is why banks are the devil. The joke in Waterboy where the mom says, foosball is the devil. Well, banks aren't quite the devil, but uh, you get on the wrong side of them and you'll think they are. As a real estate investor, you need to learn to stay away from banks. I do not have any loans in place on any properties with a bank. A lot of the guys I know do not do that. I know Pete Fortunato said he's never had a loan with the bank. And the reason you don't want to do banks is because one, banks are slow. Now, someone once said you can't steal in slow motion. And if, if you're doing a really good deal on a piece of real estate, it's not going to sit around for 30 or 45 days waiting for you to, um, you know, get your duck, get for the bank to get their ducks in a row. You're going to have to get that thing closed and get it closed now. And the only way you're going to be able to do that if you don't have a large pool of cash is to find either a hard money lender or an investor that you can partner up with. Someone that's got a self-directed 401k or just a regular 401k that they can borrow money from for a short period of time. Now, I know these, are, these aren't, you know, they don't grow on trees. You've got to go out and actually find them and you've got to build a relationship with them. You know, not so much relationship with a hard money lender because they're all about the money. They don't care what your credit rating is. They don't care what you've got. All they're looking at is the piece of property. And if you fall down, do they want it? And that's all they care about. You know, can you can they get in it with a low enough overhead that they can pick it up and make a killer deal out of it if for some reason you fail? Now, a bank is looking for the same thing only on a different level. If you fall down, they want to take everything you have. They're not just attaching that one thing. You know, they say the devil's in the details. Well, most of the time people don't realize every time you sign a, any kind of mortgage at a bank, they also attach everything that you own, every other piece of property. And if you've got, you know, 20, 30 pieces of property, that can get expensive really fast. They can make you start auctioning up, auctioning off property in a down market to cover your debt. You know, when you're dealing with an investor or a hard money lender, you can actually call them up and talk to them, work it out. You know, and say, look, you know, can we tack some of this on to the end? You know, you can come up with a reasonable plan that works great for them, works great for you. And you can, you know, you both come out smelling good in the end, even if it takes a year or two to make it happen. Now, a lot of you will say, well, I can't afford that kind of interest. You know, I want to go to a bank where I can get 5% interest. Well, the problem with being an investor and doing, trying to do 5% interest is you're going to run out of, of the ability to get loans. After you've had so many loans, that's done. You what, seven, eight loans, and they're going to start getting nervous about you. Now, the, um, the investors will keep going with you. You know, they don't care how many loans you've got outstanding. As long as that property is a good property and, and they know it will work for them, that's all they care about. Sorry about that. I had to turn off the phone for a second. So where were we? Oh, yeah. Worried about how much it costs. You know, with a hard money lender, they're going to charge you 12% interest. And, and I know that sounds like a lot. And if, if you're trying to do a rental property with them, it's too much. You can't do it. You know, you get down into the 9% range, 8%. That's a good long-term play for somebody's IRA, and you can actually make money at it. And, and nobody says you have to, to, you know, you've got to pay them interest. You can have a partnership arrangement. You know, they put up the money, you put up all the work, you keep a portion of the profits, they keep a portion of the profits. You know, there's a lot of things you can work out, you know, that, that keeps you from having to go to a bank and borrow money. Now, another way to get money is with owner financing. Now, a lot of people claim that they do owner financing all the time. I've never been that successful with owner financing. It's one of those things where, you know, I try it on just about every deal, but most of the time the people just want out. You know, they want it, they want it to go away and uh, they don't want to take payments or anything. They just want to be gone and done and see you later. You know, there's been, I think, one occasion that I was able to do a large property, $300,000 with owner financing. And that was the only large property. I've done some smaller stuff, but you know, nothing big. But uh, there's no reason you can't 
work yourself around, find some, uh, find some other investors that don't want to do what they don't want to work. They've got money and just want to get a good return and work with them, make some creative deals with them. And you're both going to win in the end. Well, that's about it for today. Just want to throw that out there to you. Stop by and see me at davidpwitt.com. Sign up for the free training and I will see you later. To learn more about real estate, check me out at davidpwitt.com for more real estate training, downloads, and pick up a copy of my free book, 10 Steps to Becoming a Real Estate Wholesaling Rockstar.